Well, hello, and welcome back to episode three in the winter wildlife photography series with me, Tom Mason, and Wax Photo Video. Today, I'm at one of my favorite locations up on the Norfolk coast to come and photograph gray seals. Now, I love photographing gray seals. They are absolutely incredible animals. And in the UK, we are so lucky to have such a fantastic population of them. Thousands of them breed along the Norfolk coast, as well as around the rest of the UK. And they're just such a stunning animal to come and see. Now, these locations on the coast, of course, in the winter, are their uh, breeding areas. So we have to be really careful uh, when we're out photographing the seals. A lot of the locations that you'll see seals at have restrictions that are in place um, to help conserve them and make sure that they're protected in their breeding. Now, as photographers, of course, that does provide us with re some restrictions of where we can go. But still, with working in and being really ethical in our approach, we can still make some great images in these locations. And it's why I come back and visit year after year. Right, well, before I get started making any images, it's probably a good chance to talk about the gear rather quickly and what I'm using today. I'm keeping it really stripped back and simple for this style of shoot, just rolling with the one lens and one camera. I've got the 400 mil on to give me the maximum amount of reach on my Z9. Now, one thing that I'm definitely utilizing today is the DX crop mode in my Z9 body. It's really handy to be able to just press down that button, scroll the wheel and crop in 1.5 times. You know, you could use a teleconverter, but when you're in an environment like this, that's sandy, windy, um, stuff blowing around, I don't really want to be undoing the lens and exposing my body to that sort of stuff. So it's really nice that I can keep my eye to the viewfinder and click between DX and full frame mode, giving me multiple composition options in one really small and flexible setup. Right, so I've spent a little while wandering up and down the trail, looking for some locations for my pictures. It's one of the reasons I really love to firstly start with my binoculars in my hand. They're such a useful tool for the wildlife photographer to scout locations out. You know, before you settle in and make images, you really want to know that you're in the best spot for the day. And these are an easy way for me to get a good vantage up and down the coastline and look for both the seals and the areas I'm going to shoot from. You know, it's really nice just looking through these and easily locating seals up on the beach. Now down in front of me there's some nice little clusters here, um, a good group of seals there and a couple down here. And as much as you know you might think it's excellent to go and just find the biggest mass of seals on the beach and work there, that doesn't always translate to the best pictures. A large number of subjects can get a bit confusing in your images, you know there's a bit too much going on. So I like to really work with smaller groups. I also find that that's where less people tend to congregate as well um, and I can have a bit of a better experience photographing. One of the other important considerations that I'm really scouting for is locations where I'm going to get a good vantage point on my subject. There's no use having loads of seals in front of me but it just being a really big drop down to them because I'm never going to get an interesting shot. So as I'm looking up and down I want there to be nice clearance and a place that I can really um, find a nice spot to stop and locate myself my images for the rest of the day. So when it comes to locations that are busy with other people, that are regular spots that you know day trippers and visitors are going to come and see, you will find a lot of the time that there are restrictions imposed for the conservation of the wildlife that you're going to come and see. You know, this seal colony here, um, the fences and restrictions are in place to protect the seals. It means that they can breed happily and do really successfully on this coastline without too much human uh, interaction and problems. Now, as a photographer, of course, I'm not just going to break that for my images. I've got to respect what's in front of me, but it isn't necessarily that much of an issue. A lot of the time when you come and to these sort of areas, there is one simple trick that's going to massively increase the quality of the images you come home with. You know, if I stand up here and just look over the fence, I'm going to get an ugly, awkward shot. It's not going to be something super pretty. But if I just simply lower my angle, get down low, get on my front, on my knees, drop my tripod level, 
I'm going to immediately change the style and quality of images that I'm getting. Still working within the restrictions, I can just make images that actually look really nice. Here I've dropped my camera down, um, using my tripod low to the ground to give me some nice stability. And I found this great little cutout uh, in the dunes in front of me. This is providing a little window that I can shoot through down onto the beach. Now, in front of that, I've got a little bit more marram grass that works as a really nice foreground for my images. Nice kind of like out of focus green effect before it trends onto the beach where the seals are positioned. Now in this location, it's good for a photograph, but at the moment there's not too many seals in front and the action's not happening. So one of the things you are going to have to do when working in this sort of environment is spend a little longer waiting and being patient. You know, if I just sit here and watch, I know that the seals are going to start moving. At this time of year, a lot of the males are coming along and breeding with females. That's creating some nice drama on the beach. I've got seals breaching out of the water, coming straight onto the beach, giving me lots of different opportunities to make shots. But if I just sit in this one spot and take a little bit of time, I know that my angle is going to be quite nice. And when the seals finally do get to one of the spots that I'm really set up for, that's when I'm gonna start making my images. If you just keep walking up and down, you will often miss the best shots. It's nice to find a location that's good, a great position to set up your camera, and then just wait it out and see what comes. And right now, I've actually got a couple of the seals making their way up the beach, so I better get behind the camera. So we've come to the end of the restricted area on this beach, but one thing you've got to understand with nature is that it doesn't and isn't controlled by the restrictions that humans place on it. One of the things that we as wildlife tourists have to do is make sure that when we're outside of the known restrictions, we have to place the restrictions on ourselves to make sure that we're looking after the wildlife that we've come here to see and watch and enjoy and photograph. Now, there's a lovely group of seals behind me, and you know I can easily walk out onto the beach, but doing so is definitely going to disturb them and cause them problems. They'll probably move off maybe into the water or shift back up the beach, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to change their behavior. So what I'm going to do is from this little spot is I'm going to sit down here for a little while, and then once they're comfortable with me, you know, a lot of them are looking over this way, they're interested in me standing here. Once they kind of go back to sleeping, rolling over and doing the things that seals do, then I can make a much slower approach, uh, maybe crawl down the sides to get the angle that I'm looking for for my pictures without making a major disturbance for these wonderful and beautiful animals that are out in front of me. And anyway, it's just wonderful to come over and watch such a beautiful species. So I'm gonna take a pew. Right, so whilst I'm waiting for the seals to kind of acclimatise to my presence before I get down for some shots, that's probably a good chance to talk about light. Now, as photographers, of course, we love dramatic lighting. Those early mornings, late evenings, produce some of the most sensational light you'll ever see. It's just fantastic. One of the things I absolutely love are overcast days. You know, the lighting that you get on an overcast day is really beautiful. It's very natural in the way that it falls quite evenly over your subjects, meaning that you can really extend and get the best out of the dynamic range of your camera. You're not gonna have deep shadows and really bright highlights. And of course, it just extends the amount of time that you can get out and shoot pictures. So today, as I'm looking over the seals, I'm really hoping that this cloud hangs around. So it's really nice to have just bumped into a couple of the wardens as they were coming off the beach. You know, it's really nice to just know that you're allowed down here and we'll get into position. There's loads of seals and they're really comfortable with us now. So I'm just probably gonna wander down, get myself set up in the middle. So I've got a really nice flat perspective. It gives me a much better angle to photograph the seals. Hopefully with a bit of sand in the foreground, it's gonna look really natural. And because they're really spread out here, I can move a bit more without having an impeding on their like personal space. 
you always want to keep a super respectful distance and even though of course there's no restrictions in front of me i've got to impose those on myself So one of the things I'm just gonna grab is my waterproof cover. The wind is starting to get up a bit and the sand's starting to spray around. So as much as it's not wet, it's just good to protect my lens, keep it off. It's also gonna blend it in a bit more to the ground that's nice, but largely it's just to keep my camera nice and protected from any sand that's blowing around. And it's also gonna mean that in a minute, I can lower myself down a little bit further and get an even better angle on the seals. I really want to be as low as possible to really make the most of the foreground and using the uh, sand, but uh, it's lo really looking quite nice. Got a couple of seals over the top of the rocks to my right that's also looking really good. I might slowly move forward and get into this dip that's in front of me. You know, the whole point of being laid down is that I'm reducing my outline. You know, I don't want to stand up and walk across the beach because that's going to create a disturbance. The whole idea when you're working with wildlife is to be very, very careful in your approach and also in the way that you exit as well. You know, there's no point in me crawling all the way down here and then just standing up and walking back because I'm going to freak everything out. I've got to be very measured in the way I approach and making sure I'm really taking my time, watching my subjects through my binoculars, seeing if there's any change. If I notice them suddenly getting freaked out, and moving, I'm not going to move any closer. I'm going to stay exactly where I am. I'm going to settle here for a good 20 minutes, 30 minutes before I move at all, because that's going to give the wildlife time to adjust to me and make sure it's comfortable. If I notice that stuff starts to move away, I know that I'm too close and I'm in a location that's causing disturbance. And that's when you need to pull back and make sure that you're not advancing. Some people can get a little bit blindsided when they're out photographing. You know, you're looking through the viewfinder, you're just really just constantly focused on getting the images. And that can be a time when you might accidentally cause a disturbance. So you've really got to be conscious to watch your surroundings, look for your subjects and move appropriately. And if you ever think that something is causing a disturbance, it's always better to pull back and miss a picture than cause any harm to the wildlife that you're working with. You have got to remember as well, Right now, the seals, as much as we're coming into the breeding season, there aren't youngsters on this beach. There's one right off down there that I can see from my binoculars, and there was one as we were walking in. They're miles away from where we are now. If there was loads of pups littering the beach, I wouldn't want to be down here. That's the wrong time of year to come to this location. I'm really here for the adults, because they're the shots that I'm looking for. And, uh, you know, disturbing youngsters is certainly something I don't want to be doing. And it's why, of course, you know, using the telephoto lens is definitely the best way to work in this style but uh, everyone seems all right with my presence so far so again i can slowly move a little bit further and get myself into that photographic position but just remember when you get there you've got to get back again so take your time oh i've got one of the seals is really cute just looking over the top of me that's really quite nice that's the sort of images that I'm really after, those cute looks over the tops of things. And it's why it's nice to be low on the ground. It gives you a bit more foreground so you can focus on those kind of just characterful moments that seals give you. Oh, she's a real beauty. She's one I'm certainly going to try and photograph. So what I'm going to do is just edge my way in and get myself a little bit lower on the tripod. I should get a really nice shelf of sand right in front of her. That should be ideal for some really nice pictures. So one of the things I absolutely love as a wildlife photographer is when animals fall to sleep in front of you. Really lets you know that all the work that you put in to really get close without disturbing them has certainly worked. You know, I've just been moving in closer to the seals and the big male that's out in front of me rolled over, looked at me for a couple of seconds, then just thought, ah, you're no problem at all. And I went back to sleep, absolutely gorgeous. I've actually just framed up a bit of a, um, kind of an abstract shot of him actually, using the um, sand in front as a foreground, his mottly body as a mid, and then a blue in the back. It looks really quite nice. Oh, I really do love working with seals. 
Now, when it comes to wildlife photography, you don't always have to concentrate on photographing a whole animal. Sometimes the more interesting pictures can be the detail shots. It might be the side of a seal, you know, the colors and the mottledness of it, or it might be just going in closer on like one uh, of, of their fins or of a little bit of their face as it pokes over the, over the sand. You don't always have to have the entire body of a subject to make an interesting picture, something that's certainly worth considering. I really like to build portfolios of pictures up when I'm out working. So uh, always looking for those unique and little extra compositions that I can add into the images that I already have. So I just got a cracking shot. One of the seals came out of the water, moved around, rolled over in the sand that gave me a good couple of minutes of activity. Then as it moved in, it just touched noses briefly with another one of the seals as the wind got up and blew the sand across the foreground, really adding that extra dimension to the shot. That's certainly going to be one of the keepers from today. Well, that was great. Got some really good activity at the end, yeah. Some fantastic little interactions between the sea, coming onto the beach, interacting, fighting, a little bit of exchange. Really, really nice. The light is starting to drop a bit now. And uh, as the seals were slowly moving down more towards me, I wanted to back off and get out of the way to just allow them to get down where they want to naturally. So it's probably a good time to call today's video. Well, it's been an absolutely great day on the beach. The weather's closing in a bit now, but it's been really good. You know, scouting out a location early on and then settling in and taking my time to just get myself in the right spot, certainly pay dividends. You know, patience is such a key thing with wildlife photography. Slowly getting to where you're going to sight yourself for the day and just waiting for the action to unfold. Laying down in the sand and just letting the seals get accustomed to me really just worked a treat. The activity started to increase nearer the end. I got some great shots that I'm really, really happy with. You know, it's days of wildlife photography like this that just make it all worthwhile. I hope you picked up a few tips and tricks from shooting out with me today and uh, hopefully you'll join me in the next video.